Okay, so if you look at lightweight designs, initial designs mainly focused on low hardware footprints, but it is not realistic to have a single cipher to satisfy all needs. Because initially people thought that when the academicians started to work in this area, they thought that the only constraint was the hardware size. Because if you need more gates to uh, put on the device, for instance, a smart card generally has like 10,000 gates and only 20% of these gates are reserved for cryptographic operations. So in it, mainly you have to have an algorithm that is like around 2000 gates or less, gate equivalents or less, okay? But this is not the only problem because even if you make something really small, maybe the latency will be bad or the throughput will be bad, right? So it is not easy to design something that satisfies all of our needs, but initially, Cryptographers designed algorithms that require low hardware footprints, okay? To fit within constraint settings, lightweight ciphers rely on simply run functions or minimal key schedules. The simpler structure of many of these uh, ciphers may lend itself to new attacks. So this is really important because before the lightweight cryptography, we had algorithms like DES and AES. And we discovered cryptanalysis techniques like differential cryptanalysis, linear cryptanalysis, and so on. But once uh, lightweight designs are became popular, since they had simpler designs, analyzing them allowed us to discover new cryptanalysis techniques. So many uh, new techniques, like invariant subspace attacks and so on, are actually discovered by working on the simpler design. So it is always a nice idea to focus on very simple designs like these lightweight designs and come up with new uh, cryptanalysis techniques. So if you look at the literature, you will see that some there are some lightweight algorithms which are which actually uh, focus their low hardware footprint. So you can actually implement them on the hard drive by using around 2000 gate equivalents, okay? So there are the first three, present, height, and Clefia. Uh, Present and Clefia are IOCell standards for lightweight block ciphers. Height is a block cipher stand, IOCell stand, block cipher standard, but actually it is broken. Actually, I broke it uh, in my master's thesis in the related key set, but it is still in the IOCell standard. But that cryptanalysis actually prevented it to become an IOCell lightweight block cipher standard. I know it because I saw the internal communication of these IOCell communications. There are also famous designs like LED and Catan. But then some people said that, okay, our own problem is not only the hardware footprint, maybe we need low memory consumption or small embedded processes, right? Sometimes because these devices doesn't have that much of memory. So there are some special designs like I2B, Pride and Spec that only focuses on to have low memory consumption or small embedded processes. But some people focus on low latency, they designed a cipher called PRIS, which is a nice algorithm. And some said that, okay, uh, we should have side channel protection, not by uh, changing the implementation, but we, we should focus on, on the design side. This is important because for instance, let's say that PRIS is an algorithm designed to have low latency, but once you implement it in the hardware, uh, there may be side channel attacks to that cipher. So in order to avoid it, Maybe you, mod you will modify your implementation, but maybe after that implementation, it will be slower. It will consume more battery and maybe it will require more latency. So you will you know, lose your main point. So they say that maybe we should have some designs from the, even the design side, it should provide side channel resistance. So these, there are this kind of algorithms. So as you can see, Having a single algorithm satisfying all of these needs is a very hard process. So this is why we have actually a lot of algorithms. And for this reason, uh, Nis said that maybe we should have a competition because after these algorithms, IOC, there were, uh, some of them became IOC standards. For instance, for the Steam Cypher standards, we have two IOC standards and a Core and Trivium. So Trivium has key size and 80 bits. So actually for me, this actually is no longer, should no longer be used because 80-bit security is not enough nowadays. If you need security for a few hours, then you may use it. Maybe capturing the key after a few hours will not 
break your system, then maybe then it is okay. But if you need a long-term security, then you cannot use 8-bit keys. And of course also so, uh, supports 8-bit keys, but it also has 128-bit support. So for the lightweight hash functions, we have three standards, Photon, Spongen, and Lezamta LW. And for the MAC standards, message authentication code standards, we have LightMAC, Sudix key mode, and chess key. So I think I did not include block cipher standards here because I put some of them here, present and Clefia, but I should add something more. In 2012, present and Clefia became lightweight block cipher standard, but I think in 2019, they added a third algorithm called LIA. So it is missing in the slides, but we will talk about them in the future. So we have a lot of ISO standards, but we don't have a NIST standard for lightweight cryptography because NIST says that AES is good for everything. But after some point on, they said that maybe we should have a lightweight standard which should be used when AES is not enough. So you can look at this report uh, and see how the uh, competition is announced and how the processing will be done. And in that document, they uh, presented their evaluation criteria. So at the physical side, site they will look at the area it's uh, actually uh, the area it requires to be implemented on the hardware this can be measured by millimeter squares or gate equivalents uh, on the physical side they are also interested how much memory it requires in terms of ram and rom at the implementation side they will look at the hardware and software you know the code size and etc and also the energy in terms of joules in the performance side you look at the latency, throughput, and power in terms of watts. Also, in the term of security, you want to see how much bit security it provides. I told you 112 is currently acceptable. And for this competition, NIST said that 112 is OK. But anything less than that actually is not acceptable. So another other you know, evaluation criteria are the attack models and side channel resistance, et cetera. So according to this, uh, NIST provided the timeline. So they had the first lightweight crypto workshop, then uh, prepared the draft version of this report, had the second workshop, then published the report that I showed you before. Then in the August 2018, they announced the submission requirements and evaluation criteria. February 2019 was the submission deadline. I think they received 56 algorithms. So they announced these algorithms in April 2019. And uh, sorry, the first round candidates. So from 56 algorithms, it reduced to 32. And then we have the uh, finalist, I think, announced here, the number reduced to 10 here. So from 56 to 32, then to 10 algorithms. So last uh, workshop was held in May. I think it was virtual. So the process is still going. So these are the second round candidates. So from 56, they were at the first round. These are the 32 algorithms that are, they did, made it to the second round. But as I mentioned here, I think let me look at the data again. So in March 2020, they said that these 10 algorithms are the finalists. So NIST actually hasn't said that if they will choose only a single winner or more than one winners. But the thing is that NIST want to choose uh, probably one winner because the documentation would be easier that way because it is a very bureaucratic process. Industry wants a single winner because if you choose two winners, then the industry says that we have to put both of them on the device. But if you put two algorithms on the device, then the point of having you know small area and that kind of stuff becomes meaningless. So they insist that we should choose one winner. Academicians want more than one winner because this way they increase their chances of winning. But we will see what happens. So these are the algorithms. My favorite one is Ascon. So generally I uh, talk about it because it already won a, another competition, Caesar competition. So it is one of the important finals, but they're also very good other designs. So I really don't know which one will be the winner. And we will see throughout this course, maybe they will announce it this year or maybe the next one. 
So if we want to summarize, IoT devices are very different than each other. So it is hard to provide standards for all of the devices, right? This is one of the main problems. Current device production does not focus on security because you focus on the price. And in order to provide something cheap, you have to you know, reduce the security. This standardization process is going to take two or three years at least. So we will see the winner then, but maybe at the end, if there's a winner, uh, you will start to see new IoT devices and on their box, it will say that, you know, it supports NIST approved algorithm. That is the winner of this competition. Producers should provide their own security solutions until IoT standards are available. And this is a very risky thing because we will, we are seeing many examples and we will see many other examples in the future. We will see that, you know, lies of the some houses will turn and off again by somebody attacking from outside and so on. So we might have some disasters at the IoT side until some good standards are around. We may need different lightweight ciphers for different purposes. So maybe once this competition has, maybe NIST may announce or some other organization may announce other competitions just for the different use cases. Due to their simplicity, lightweight designs may be weak against attack types that are not discovered yet. So in cryptanalysis, sometimes we discover new attack types because of this. Even in my PhD thesis, I found some SBOX weaknesses because they were used in this kind of lightweight designs. Lightweight does not mean shorter key. Using short keys provides almost no security. And in my opinion, there is no need to use keys shorter than 128 bits. Okay, if you are using something shorter than this, you should be, uh, you should know that somebody may listening to your communication. 